what if our human body actually becomes the interface? What if we get devices that are able to directly translate what we do with our human body and get total expressiveness out of that? So I've been working with this company called Leap Motion, and they've got this little device that stands here that is going to come out to the audience, to the public in about a month, in about a month now. And so what does this do? It measures the movement of hands and fingers in 3D space. Now, this is not anything like Kinect, and I'll show you that. This, again, goes into the direction of what I've been talking about. It's so small and so precise that it becomes creative. So these are the figures. Also, and that, uh, that was something I found very interesting. One of the ways that they're able to keep this so cheap, so it's only 80 euros, is by sending all the data all the way to the computer, end-to-end -to, -end to the software, and doing all the processing on the machine. Sounds familiar? Similar to the Eigenharp. They use the same approach. Instead of building that in here, we've got devices that are so powerful that we're able to do things that were never possible before. So let me show you how this works. Yeah, that's not it. That's here. So this is my leap motion icon here at the top. I'm actually very surprised that it works here, but it does, because I've got all these lights here, right? And it's measuring infrared, so it's got a lot of additional noise due to the heat and stuff like that. Um, so it's running in a mode that is actually the least optimal mode. It's, it automatically uh, changes its modes. And as you see here, this little light is yellow, meaning that it's well, detecting that it could be better. Let me open up the visualizer. So this is the Leap Motion visualizer. And I can hold up my hand. And it's detecting every little movement of every finger. And I can do this with two hands. Right? And it's fast. Right? So this kind of data rate and this kind of resolution is bringing, again, a whole new world of possibilities. So obviously, I was interested in that. And what they did was something that I've actually never seen done before. They've been extremely conservative about putting this into the hands of the common man. Because they understand that this is a totally new interaction model. It's got new rules, and they probably don't even know what they are, because it's so new. And so what they did was they sent out 10,000 free developer units to developers. You had to sign up for it, and then they picked the 10,000 that would receive them. And it's been going all over the place. People have been experimenting with this, and it's extremely interesting, because everyone has another take on what you can do with this kind of data. And so what I did was create music software with it, obviously. So this is a software called Gecko that allows you to express music with your hand movements. So let me start that up real quick. So I've got Gecko here. And as I move my hand, it's going to detect. So every, every square that's highlighted is information that it's using. And at the bottom, you can see the information that it's sending out in bar charts. Right? And so what I then did was connect this to the Eigenharp. And I can do... So again, I actually don't even know what I'm going to do with this. Yes, I'm still figuring out how, how, how am I going to apply this to music. This is kind of cool. I can feel this sound. And, and why is this cool? It's because there is no latency. I have a direct connection through the data to audio. 